Pues, eh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us here. And we are going to have uh, another meeting about talent. Uh, we have a wonderful student here in the University of Granada. We also have other students uh, abroad, but um, we are going to, to present uh, the, the need or what are the companies are looking for uh, in, in PTS Granada in our Tech Park. Uh, we are going to use also, uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, we just to to mention that we are working also in a project that is called InnoCore, that is a Erasmus Plus project, and we try to offer a curriculum that combines training in advanced core technologies in life science with entrepreneurial education, and this part of this internship could be also a part of this project uh, because it's team from the innovation enabling environment of core facilities in academia and want to have a community of international partnerships so to to combine a other projects or uh, possibilities in other research institutions and companies uh, uh, trying to, co to, to, to collaborate uh, or to establish a collaboration between academia and industry. So we are going to, to, to present some companies and the first one is Lino Pharma. We have here with us uh, Elena Puerta Fernandez, CEO of Lino Pharma, and Juan Carlos Morales, Scientific Advisor and Founder. I have to tell you that this company is an amazing company with a lot of potential, and they are going to explain what are they looking for, um, what are the expectations from all of you. Uh, I put it in the chat also that you can ask questions, uh, uh, raise your hand. Uh, open your micro, uh, use uh, the chat to, to ask questions, but take this opportunity to, to learn about these companies because they are very uh, promising companies. Um, uh, take advantage of this opportunity to, to meet these people. So, Elena, uh, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Your floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Uh, thank you, Lourdes and the PTS for the opportunity to present our company here today. Um, see if any students is interested in what we are doing and what we need. So my name is Elena Puerta. I'm CEO of Lindo Pharma, as uh, Lourdes was saying. And just a brief introduction of our company. Lindo Pharma is a startup company, a spin-off of the SIC and Cabimer. These are two uh, scientific institutions in Spain. And from the research of two lab groups in, this, in these institutions, Lino Pharma was founded in 2019. Lino Pharma is a drug development company that is focused in the development. Oh, sorry, uh, Lourdes, I think you, you changed. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So I, I was saying that Lino Pharma is a drug development company and we are focused in the development of novel treatments for ocular diseases. Specifically, we are uh, targeting retinal degenerative diseases that are diseases that are affecting uh, a million of people worldwide, more than 200 million people worldwide. Our first uh, indication, the first disease that we are targeting is called retinitis pigmentosa. This is a rare disease that affects around 2 million people worldwide. And people diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa uh, suffer very uh, severe vision problems. They are diagnosed very early, like childhood or teenagers, and they are told that in four, six years, they are gonna become blind. So it's a very, uh, it has a very high social impact and it affects tremendously the quality of life of these people. So uh, in Linopharma, we have developed drugs that have already shown efficacy in animal models of this disease, or RP. Um, is Lin21 is a chemically uh, derivative of a natural product, that's Resveratrol, and has shown have high efficacy in mice model of RP. Our main uh, advantage is that, that our drug has shown efficacy when it's administered as eye drop. Uh, nowadays here, our competitors in RP, uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but RP is a genetic disease 
and there, it has been described more than 80, 80 genes that can uh, 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 make the, the disease. 80 genes, the mutation effect in 80 genes can provoke the disease. But only one gene, there is only a treatment with the, for the patient that has the mutation in one gene, the gene RPE65. That means that only 2% of the patients have a, have a, a effective treatment as of today. And as is, you can see here in the picture, that is a very um, not beautiful picture, the administration of the drug has to be as an injection. So we think we offer a very, uh, a very good, uh, we have a very high competitive advantage because our drug can be used as eye drop. And administration of eye drop will greatly benefit the quality of life of the patients and will only, well, uh, make it easier for them to follow the treatment, increase the efficacy and reduce cost. So what we are looking from the, now from the students, if they decide to join us uh, in the program, uh, we were recently awarded a, a project from the National Spanish Minister, Ministry, and we need to do the management of this project. So the student will be in charge of the management of the project uh, with myself. Uh, we also need to review to bring up today an analysis of our competitors, not only in RP, that is the, but also in, in other uh, retinal degenerative diseases. And also we need a, a review of the clinical trials that have been done, because our idea is to, to finish with the development of the, of the drug. So we have to do the preclinical regulatory and then the clinical trials. So we will need a review of the clinical trials. Um, and I think this was all that I wanted to say. Uh, if anyone has a question, I will be more than happy to answer it. Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, I'm, uh, I mean, there is no, no any question in the chat right now, but please feel free to ask questions because uh, uh, I think that that is a good opportunity. So can you explain a little bit more about this project? It's not a Neotech project. It's, it's, a, it's a different project, uh, Elena. No, the, the project is the Neotech project. Ah, it's the Neotech. We were awarded the Neotech project, yeah, and we need to follow up with the activities that we have to do in the project. So in this activity, we have uh, our first compound is LIN21, that is the one that is more advanced, but we are developing new drugs to, to improve, to white our pipeline of products. So one of the activities in the project will be to see if our products are good for another diseases. So we have to follow this. And also we have to do some of the preclinical regulatory studies that we are gonna be needing uh, to, to move forward the, the development of the drugs. So the student will also be in charge in, in uh, supervising that these activities are being done and to look for companies able to provide the services that we need. Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, so are some of the things that the, the student will be doing. Well, that's, I think that that is an excellent opportunity because uh, yeah. I think that it's important to know that Neotech is one of the best uh, ideas that we have right now um, uh, for startup companies. Um, I mean, it's, it's a good learning opportunity. Uh, Antonio is asking us is how many students can you accept this, accept this year? So I think, uh, Juan Carlos, that we say one or two students, I don't know if they, I mean, uh, we, can, we probably could have two, but if they are not overlapping, I don't know if this is possible because I don't really know the, the timeline for the, for the program. You mean overlapping that shouldn't I mean, like be it, at the same time, no? Yes. This okay, is so yeah. if they, for instance, can start in May <laughs> and it is September and then the other one to October to uh, yeah. um, so yeah. something like that. That's it. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Also, I would like to say that since we are in an early stage, the student that comes here is going to learn a lot of things because uh, it's from the very beginning of the development of the drug and we have to go through all the preclinical and as I say, the student will have to review clinical trials. So it's going to be, uh, the student is going to be able to learn all the process of a drug development, you know, like from the very beginning, the discovery till the very end. Uh, we are not going to do everything this year, of course, but uh, he's going to be able to learn all the stages that a drug has to, has to go through. 
And one thing that I am thinking also that we want to, to uh, Juan Carlos know that also, that, uh, and I think that maybe you too, Elena, that we are working with Covans uh, for clinical trials and also for regulatory, and they are going to help us with uh, one accelerator program that, that we are working in. So uh, one thing that uh, I think that this student can do also is to prepare some paperwork and to do some uh, uh, Google <laughs> research, you know, clinical trial research and all of that, and uh, in order to to prepare all this documentation. So I think that could be a, a, a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, this is what I meant, Lourdes, when I said that uh, the student is going to be learning all the stages of a drug development process because we are not going to be doing everything, but we need to be prepared for the future, and this is what we will be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Um, so here is our contact information, uh, mm -hmm. if not now, but uh, later. Anyone have a, a question regarding the company or what we are uh, looking for? To, uh, please feel free to email us. Okay. Anyone have any question? Uh, mm, uh, the students, because you shouldn't be shy. I mean, it's a great opportunity for all of you to understand and to know uh, these wonderful mentors. So uh, if you have any question, just ask. Oh, there is a, a question. So, no, no, I'm sorry because you know, it's that I don't want to use this because you see there is a question. Okay, one second, because we have. Okay, so there are no more questions with some comments. So, uh, anyway. A student, you have these contacts here. Uh, so if you have questions later, you can always ask. But I think that this is a good opportunity. So if you have any question anytime, uh, let us know, okay? I have a question here. They are asking if the student attend in person. No, we will do everything online, you know, or telephone. We don't, yeah, we don't have, we do have an office in Granada, but I'm in Sevilla. So everything will be virtual for the moment. I don't know if by the end of the year, maybe, uh, but I don't think so. Exactly, Alba. Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. The, the thing is that as the moment is now, you know, it's kind of tricky with all the COVID, but uh, we hope to that the thing solve, but for the time being. Okay. Yeah, if people are saying thank you. So, well, thank you, well, thank you so much, Elena and thank Juan you. Carlos. <laughs> So now we have Bob here. One second. Let's see. Okay. Bob. Bob, uh, for Bob have another very interesting discovery phase biotech company with a, with a, a, a very interesting technology platform um, that is protected. Uh, and he will explain the company and the opportunity for all of you. Thank you, Bob. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Lourdes. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, Elena, for such a such an interesting uh, presentation. So it'll be difficult to follow such a good presentation, but uh, I'll try. Um, so as Lourdes said, we're uh, also a discovery phase company, even earlier than uh, Limno Farm. Um, we have a platform, we're also, which is also a spun off of uh, Thesic, um, for analyzing uh, at a massive scale enzyme activity. So we have two different microarrays that we're um, finishing printing at the moment. One is around about 4,000 enzymes from the core metabolic pathways of humans, and another, another um, array which has around about the same number, a little less, um, for, um, uh, of enzymes that uh, cover around about 600 or so uh, bacteria, which are part of the, um, the human microbiome. So basically, we are looking at um, a certain range of diseases. We've, we've looked at um, uh, setting up experiments in quite a few. We've uh, focused initially on lung and breast cancer. Um, 
we are also uh, we also have a parallel program um, in lysosomal storage disorders, which are uh, rare diseases. Um, they're a little bit conceptually easier because they're all they're all caused by um, by well the majority are caused by enzyme deficiencies, um, but that's a completely completely different project. Um, the other area that we're working on at the moment and at the, the point of initiating a collaboration in is uh, chronic kidney disease, which is a very common disease, a disease that is regrettably getting more and more frequent um, and has some fairly, uh, fairly significant uh, and costly complications. Um, so um, as, as we said, we're in the discovery phase. So essentially we are looking for um, enzyme activity behaviors and patterns which are completely different in disease or subtypes of diseases. So there could be stages of cancer or subtypes of cancer or particular, particularly difficult um, to treat forms of cancer, which regrettably in both lung and breast cancer, there still remain uh, quite a few of these areas. And to look at, um, and to look at you know, what, what we can learn about the metabolic uh, characteristics and metabolic pathways of these diseases. The first wave that we're doing is the part, the non-microbiome part, but as all of these diseases, particularly all diseases are, are also conditioned by the microbiome, there will be a secondary wave as well, looking at microbiome in these particular cases. So um, as I say, we're at a pretty early stage. So the focus really is on partly on laboratory work, building laboratory uh, uh, collaborations with, with researchers and research institutions, and especially clinicians. Our initial focus uh, is national, so we're we're working based. We're going to work out of um, of Granada, out of the PTS, um, and our collaborations at the moment are are within Spain, um, but that will that will change shortly. Um, we once we've got to a point where we can start to to identify some of the key um, the key the key signatures that we we know from from previous studies that we will find. Um, obviously, we're going to pivot a little bit in the role of the, the, uh, the master student that, that will participate will be a little bit different because we need to then start to look more at what the existing treatment options are, what the unmet needs are clinically, and all of the things that you'd, you'd build up into, um, into really understanding what kind of product you need to build. Um, I think the other thing I'd need to say is that we are, we are not looking just for say treatment we're also looking for diagnostics so anything that could really um be a good indicator that that something has initiated that the disease has initiated from something a previous phase which wasn't isn't classified as a disease or something that uh identifies the change from stage one to stage two to stage three and so on or is a good prognostic or can identify a particularly uh problematic subtype of the disease will also be of interest for us as well. So from a, from a positioning and a value proposition point of view, um, it's, quite, it's quite interesting as well. Um, as I said, we're focused on enzyme activity analysis on a large scale. So if anybody has any particular knowledge of, of enzyme chemistry, that's great. Bioinformatics, proteomics, and so on, all of the, 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 the sort of technical basis um, of this uh, is obviously very interesting but there isn't anything particular that we would say you know this is an absolute technical requirement and i think much of the um the um the skills that, that we're also looking for are, are more are more general as, as the project itself will change a lot um over time um you know we're looking for people who are flexible uh, and they're a self-starter. So I think that the, being a self-starter, which by that I mean somebody who is able to, um, you know, motivate themselves, take the initiative, um, I think is is very important. Um, and I think these these sort of more personal attributes are, are pretty important. Um, I think key to all of this is this interest in the process from research to market. As we're starting. Um, from a point where we know the technology we have, uh, but we don't know where we're going to end up, um, it's very important that the, that the person is actually, you know, infused and likes this idea of, of doing some research, asking some questions, then thinking, you know, how can we, 
how can we position this in the market? How we can we can build this product so that it actually represents uh, you know a clinical benefit to somebody, um, so that it represents a cost saving benefit to the system or whatever the positioning is. Um, obviously, we have to mention uh, English um, as the collaboration. That's not so that you you need to be able to speak to me. I speak my own particular Welsh variant of Spanish, um, so that. That's not the problem, but um, obviously we, we, we anticipate um, collaborations with people in the United States and other, and other countries in the US. So, so that, would be, that would be pretty important. So I think it's, a, again, it's a good opportunity to start um, in a company where we're, we're really starting early and we have uh, a lot of um, interest in, in developing the product all the way to market. And the good thing is that being a platform-based technology um, you know, I think we can we can spread out into quite a few different diseases. Uh, as I mentioned, we're in, in lysosomal storage diseases and in cancer, chronic kidney disease. One of the other areas that um, I personally am I'm very interested in developing is the whole um, gut brain axis. So things like autism, depression, um, and dementias. So so I think that's a little bit the the scope of of what we're trying to achieve. Obviously, if you have any questions, my email is there. Feel free to uh, contact me whenever you want. Thank you so much, uh, Bob. Uh, I mean, I have to tell you that this company is, as Bob was saying, it's a platform companies with a lot of opportunities, um, uh, with a lot of options. I am looking in the chat, but I don't see any question. Feel free and also use uh, Spanish if you want, because uh, uh, I mean, uh, Bob speaks in Spanish and you, you can try, <laughs> you can see how well he speaks. Uh, here I see a, a question uh, that was saying, Christina is saying that what bioinformatics tools are commonly used in your company, Bob? But well, tools. We, we, I have to be honest, we have taken no decisions about uh, which bioinformatics tools to use. Um, in the initial phases of, of um, study, they're going to be the pretty, pretty much the standard, uh, you know, kind of biostatistical kind of software that, that, that's used quite a lot. Um, one of the reasons why we've not made any, any uh, particular decisions is I think it's going to depend a little bit on the experience of the, of the people that we bring on board. Um, and the other thing as well is that we've been talking about this for quite a long time is the incorporation of artificial intelligence um, into the analysis as well, because as I, as I mentioned, you know, we are going to end up at, uh, analyzing in some cases, you know, 4,000 or 8,000 uh, enzyme uh, activity uh, assays and then we have all of the the upstream genetics and the downstream meta metabolic implications of that plus all of the clinical data so i'm not entirely sure um what software we'll, we will be using so understand it's not a very clear question very clear answer to your question but that that really reflects where we are today in terms of the development but here, uh, Bob, I am thinking that, you know, that I mentioned, for instance, Daniel Rico, uh, that he was uh, from Newcastle University and was uh, and he's a bioinformatics that have a lot of experience in artificial intelligence. Uh, we are connecting him with uh, different people here in Genio and also in the University of Granada, because the University of Granada have a lot of in artificial intelligence. Maybe he can also help uh, the student because they are going to, to be a mentor Mentor in our uh, accelerator is going to work to help us a little bit uh, about what are the needs of the company. So maybe he can also help with that, no, with the bioinformatics tools because he's an expert also in connecting uh, different data, no, from different place and relate and to look for a relationship between or oh, among this all this data. So I, I don't know, but maybe an idea is also to, to, to try to use, uh, you know, that we are trying to, to be more efficient at PTS Granada every day. So maybe we can try to, to, to look for some people also that can help in this aspect. I think that would be, I think that would be excellent. And I think one of the interesting things about our project is that um, 
we're at a stage because we're looking at big data, the microbiome and artificial intelligence ultimately. Um, that means that um, you know, a lot of this is, to, is going to be defined by, by our willingness to do things in our imagination. Um, you know, there are not set uh, models of, of what we should do. So one of the things that interests me, for example, and I know that in Andalusia, there's, uh, you know, the possibility to access large amounts of, of clinical data and put that into the analysis. And I'd like to look at not just the disease, not just disease states, but understand how people become diseased. Um, and I think that that's another another area of research that would be great to talk to Daniel about and and uh, and to see how we could develop that. So it would also be good, you know, if people um, come into the company from the master's program to listen to their ideas as well, to, to think about what lines of research we could follow. Uh, that's that's great because. Uh, uh, another thing is that Indra is coming to the to the park uh, and he's going to 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 look for people and maybe also we can connect uh, also. So I think that is an amazing opportunity. Uh, there is a question also uh, here above about how many students can you accept. Uh, is, I guess that at the beginning will be like uh, as the circumstances are, are will be like working uh, from the distance, no? Or is no in a physical yeah. inside, no? But how many do you think that is will be possible? Well, I think we're going to. Well, inevitably, we will start with what with one person. Um, but once we have uh, the first proof of concept developed, we we hope to um, to grow pretty quickly. So um, after that, I think, um, you know, if, if things go well by the end of the year, perhaps we'll have two or three. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I think because also for a uh, paper review and all of this could be also very helpful. So uh, I think that uh, that's wonderful. But thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Bob. Uh, I don't know if you have more questions here. I see in the chat. I don't see more so but feel uh, i mean don't be shy because this is an amazing opportunity so if you want to ask uh, they come i mean to ask any curiosity or anything uh, i mean this is the first i mean uh, the first internship that you take i mean it's going to to be an important uh, milestone in your professional career so don't be shy to ask any questions uh, if, even if you want to, to do it in Spanish, is feel free to do that too, because uh, I mean we, we can do this bilingual and it's not a problem. Y voy a responder en castellano porque para la gente que no creen que hablo castellano, cualquier cosa lo en castellano no hay ningún problema y yo si podría ayudar también yo estaría encantado. And I have to tell you that I, I met Bob a long time ago, and he's a, a, a person that is going to help. <laughs> so I'm sure I can, uh, I can say oh. that. <laughs> okay, C can you just leave a comment? Sure, Antonio. Um, okay, so thank you very much, Bob and, and Elena, for your presentations. Uh, I think they're very interesting in order to know exactly what are the, the, the things we are just going on in, in our uh, technological park. But maybe for stealing is, is at the beginning, is, is something like they, they cannot assimilate because they don't have enough information about what is the processes that they follow in the different enterprises. So uh, according mm -hmm. with that, I think one of the key points is just the possibility to contact the student with Joe. Uh, in order to to clarify all of these aspects, so um, this is very important for for the student. But also, uh, maybe uh, you, you can say something about what is your vision of for the future uh, professional. In this case, uh, the, the the student right now, but future professional uh, about the progress in 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 your companies. Maybe it can be uh, something very interesting for student in order to uh, make decision about their future. So that's a very good point, Antonio. So, so obviously, the um, when when we're thinking about the project now, obviously, the there's the principal focus is really 
to use the uh, arrays that we've developed to to test certain samples and test hypotheses and then and then create um, uh, preclinical studies based based on that and, and run those studies but um, the transition from let's say from running an experiment to designing an experiment to thinking about a product and so on is 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 going to be uh, is going to happen fairly quickly. So even if we grow, um, we, we're going to need people that can understand technical aspects of the product, whether that be chemistry, um, or whether that be bioinformatics, or whether it be something on the clinical side. Um, but we also need uh, people who are able to understand you know, a product, to think of a product and how to put that in the context of, of the market. Um, so we're looking for people who can grow quickly into, into this kind of um, more of a startup based activity. So people who are, who are, uh, who have a good uh, rounded technical knowledge, but are, are interested in uh, learning other things more on the business side, on the business development side, product development side, and, and so on. I, I don't know if that answers your question, Anthony. Okay, that uh, sounds great. Thank you so much, Bob. Uh, and sorry, sorry, Lourdes, there is a question from Alba that I, I can answer. Oh, it's uh, sure, regarding sure. if the offer could be presented in Icaro um, uh, when I'm going to, to be the interviews. So in, in Icaro, as far as we know, it's not easy to, to find this offer. So uh, we are going to collect all the offer and present to the student uh, apart and not just through the, the Icaro platform. So don't worry about that, but um, you are going to, to, to have all of this information in an email or, for, or following our normal uh, platform. No, no, the Icaro, because Icaro is, is for some reason is, is, is very difficult to, to manage from, from our point of view, okay? How do you feel the students for joining the internship? They are asking us also how you you, you do that. How do you feel that? How you select? How you do, do you think that will be the right student for you? Well, I think that's for both and for everyone. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. Um, really, um, we um, we have a sort of a, a profile, if you like. Um, based on, largely on what I've, I've mentioned um, mentioned here, um, and I think that you know that will obviously condition a certain a certain amount of the um, uh, of the decision making. Um, so there'll be some general characteristics as well. But I think as most of the the, the people coming to interview will be, you know, master students who obviously have a very high level to start with. Um, a lot of what uh, is important is, is you know, how an interview goes and how the person comes across the level of enthusiasm um, uh, and, and, and personal things as well. So it's very hard to give a very specific answer to that. I mean, I've, I've been interviewing people, thousands and thousands of people for the last 30 years. And um, it's one of those things that sometimes it's hard to explain, but you always know who the right person is. Um, but as I say, it's, it's going to be a mix of, of what you've done in the past, what's on your CV and, um, and, and, and really what you're, um, what you're like as a person. Obviously, as I said, from a technical perspective, um, we're interested in protein chemistry, enzyme chemistry, but if the person had a background in, in genetics, that wouldn't necessarily um, be, a, be a significant problem. Yeah, so it's the surface self skill and all of that is are also very important. Yeah. Yeah. So. So yes, uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure that all of you have the knowledge because of the master degrees and all the information that you are getting for the B Enterprise or the master. But it's also very important. Uh, uh, what's was saying. Uh, Bob, no, that's it's the team skills. How are you? Uh, your creativity, if your passion yeah, about the things that the company is doing, all of that. I think that that's really important too. Yeah. And there was a question that came up earlier that I didn't really reply to, which was about the, um, you know, whether it will be virtual or not. Um, a bit like Elena, um, 
I'm not really sure what the, I guess, short term, it, it can only be virtual or in certain circumstances through the laboratory in, in, in Granada. But um, in, in the, uh, as soon as we can, we'd like to have a real physical base that's uh, actually functioning and, and, and working normally. Um, because I think there's a limit to what you can do virtually. So I, I don't think that will happen until probably next year. Yeah, as are difficult times, but maybe some opportunities are possible also because yeah. of that. Uh, so um, let's see uh, for the next. Thank you so much, Bob. I think that there are no more questions. So we can see now the, the next uh, company. We have here Destina Genomica, uh, Kike. So Kike, can you explain a little bit about your company? Yes, of course. Uh, good morning to everyone. Thanks, Ludas, and also thanks to Antonio and the people from the BioEnterprise Master who always bring us a lot of students to work with us. And wow, what a couple of company here here before that are really interesting and they offer really nice positions to do internship there. Uh, Destina is a company that was founded uh, in Edinburgh and has his uh, R&D activities here in Spain. And uh, we're trying to do molecular diagnostics. Uh, the main thing of the new activities after some years of developments, we are focused now on microRNA uh, detection. And we recently received a, a, a really nice project from the Eureka, that is a Eurostars, that is the one called Liberace, that is for liver damage. And it's uh, a new project where we combine the proteomics and the microRNA analysis in, in a single test that will be something disruptive in the market. Uh, because nowadays you, you cannot find something like that on a single platform. So, what we are, or what we do now is molecular diagnostic for life sciences uh, and develop new liquid bio CSAs. Uh, and this liver is uh, probably will be the one for one of the students that you can see there. This uh, develop the this immunoassay uh, along with myrnas and, and proteins. Uh, the other line we do have what we offer is uh, project management and run a big grant applications. As a strategic for the company, we use grants for subsidize the development costs. And we're trying to find the right code that supports the, the, the development we need to do. It's not that we will, we find grants to apply for just for applying to grants. That is not like that. So we find the right one that helps us to develop our technology and our reagents. Uh, in terms of the face of the company, because the two companies before were on an early stage, we are on a mature stage where we are starting our commercialization of our first products related for liver injury. So it's a different phase of the company and, and it's more, stab, more established now. So I think it's something important you to know because it's, it's not as uh, the other two where you see maybe more and more things, but not as deep as we are doing in, in our company. Uh, the skills for the people working with us will be molecular biology or experience in immunoassay and data analysis. And the other one is a little bit of project management that will be the people working for, for the grant applications and, and grant management. Uh, we will offer a couple of positions. One of them will be in the lab, the one related for the assay development. So they will be able to go to the lab and help the Destina team with this project that we will start in mid-May. So they will have the opportunity of being working on, on the lab that is not easy nowadays with this uh, COVID area. Era, but uh, I think uh, we can manage to do it pretty well as we've been doing with other projects in, in Europe for inter for interchange of people. So we've been developing our method to be as safe as possible and, and have this opportunity for students that is not always possible and it's really interesting for them to know how a laboratory works and, 
and how a project is, is run. This is a nearly 2 million projects working with companies in Austria and research centers in Austria, in Malaga, in Edinburgh. So it's a really nice project to, to work on. Thank you so much, uh, Juanjo. And, uh, oh, Juanjo, sorry, Kike. Uh, uh, and also, you know, uh, just uh, uh, Kike was saying before that they have a lot of experience with the Enterprise uh, student. They got some H2020 projects and other projects because of uh, or with the help of them too. Uh, I don't know if you can also can give us some tip or what are you looking for more specific or with your experience uh, or what you like more about this student, uh, Kike, that could help the student? Well, the, the thing is that with our experience, normally we look at the CV, first of all, and we do an interview and as Bob says before, you know, when you interview people, you realize how normally they they are and what are they like normally there is a match it's like if it was always but what they say having experience a little bit in molecular biology and have been working in the lab is important for the people who will came into the company and and also being fluent in english because all the work normally is done in english uh, for the report, the data, the data analysis also, and, and also for the grant preparation. So this is really a must to work with us. And there was a question over there that I said, yes, about the, the, exactly. if they could do some of the chicken game record, it's uh, not for the moment because uh, now we do not have uh, directly our uh, R&D facilities that we do have to a company we established last year that is in Roslyn, but we cannot offer this possibility nowadays. Yeah, and also because of the Brexit, this is kind of difficult, no? With all of this. Well, it's, the, the reason is that we establish Spain as our R&D development center. So almost all the R&D activities are based here and are here in this lab. So in Edinburgh, we, we are not, managing now these are uh, the activities that we just have received let's say is more institutional uh, uh, position for for destina uh, we do have bits in that but but it's not directly managed by by our team okay um, nothing oh Kiko, good morning um yes maybe because you, you have or you have play a key position in the development of this company Maybe you can give some advice or some uh, vision for the student about what, what is this, this world, the people who want to, to become uh, working in the enterprises, and what is uh, more or less your, your idea of, of the future for that? Okay, good question, <laughs> Antonio. Uh, well, what, as Antonio said, I started investing uh, nearly 10 years ago now, <laughs> so I'm getting older. Uh, and I started as an internship uh, and at that time I was uh, just having really, really patient about working on the biotech world. I came from the economics, not from the science world and I need to learn a lot of things about science. And after these years of experience, what I learned that it's easier for uh, people coming from science, learn some managerial skills, and, and, and work on, on, on this biotech world that for sure have, I think, lots of opportunities and also have the, the chance to develop their careers in, in this world for sure. Uh, in Andalusia and in particular in Granada, I think is uh, the biggest opportunity you can find here. Uh, and I, I think that getting this bioenterprise master is something really good because they open your mind and they uh, learn you about the the business side of the science that is uh, maybe where we you can find now the, the better opportunities thank you 
Thank you. Thank you, Kike. We have here also uh, Daniela Sroba, that she's the business developer uh, manager of CETEC. Uh, CETEC is the central, let me write it, uh, let me read it for you. It's the Central European Institute of Technology, Brno University of Technology. It's in Moravia, Bolivia, in Czechia, and also have a student with uh, knowledge about uh, uh, genomics, proteomics, uh, informatics. So uh, I don't know if, Daniela, are you hearing me? I know that you have some travels connecting, but if you want to mention something, you are more than happy. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, I do not have any questions right at the moment because uh, I did not have a appropriate time to, to talk to our students uh, if they are interested in uh, uh, some internships uh, in which uh, um, area they are interested in. So um, I'm just gathering the information from the presentations uh, of the companies and uh, I will later uh, contact our students because I also I don't know how many students from SATEC are present uh, today. Uh, in this um, meeting. Um, so uh, it is rather uh, just the first approach to, to these, uh, I don't know, five or six uh, companies. Uh, I have to uh, find uh, common areas. Uh, I can say a little bit about SATEC uh, programs. We have a program about structural biology then molecular medicine, uh, genomics and proteomics of plant systems, and uh, brain and mind research. So I uh, can see minimum uh, minimally into, into these programs uh, an overlap in the structural biology and uh, molecular medicine uh, with some of these companies. And um, if, if they are not, uh, if, the, if, the, if the COVID situation is will be bad and uh, no, present, uh, I mean, uh, uh, normal internships are possible this uh, this year. I think there are some space uh, to start a cooperation, on, um, some joint projects with SATEC if the companies will be interested. So uh, if, if the companies uh, allow me, I will contact them afterwards, my business card and more information about our programs and we will we can start discussions afterwards thank you okay daniela thank you very much we have some some students i see in the list some of the students but for sure there are not so many but this is just the first uh, uh, meetup that we have in this sense let's Sorry that I see that the camera was not right. Uh, the things that we are going to have another uh, meeting the 25th of March with other companies, so with another proposal and another opportunities. Uh, so and probably in April we will have some others. So that is just the first uh, trial to to see how that works, and we will have more in the future. So thank you for being with us. Okay, uh, Lourdes, there was a question from Jose Bueno to oh, uh, Kike. Good. Sorry, sorry that I, I'm going to, to see. Oh, the, the question chat. is, if it is possible just to, to do part of the uh, final uh, work of the master degree uh, in Edinburgh? Yeah, but I think that he asked, no? The, that Kike answered. Yes, I, 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 I think I already answered that, Antonio. And I said it's not possible now because we, we do not have really be uh, any R&D activities there at the moment. Okay. Okay, so in, in any case, probably you not know, because of the pandemic situation, but uh, it is in general, it is possible to do uh, this uh, kind of work uh, outside using the Erasmus uh, programs because uh, now they cover some part of the, of the travel and expenses there. So now it's possible, but they have to be applied inside the Erasmus program. And in that case, the best thing is just to contact with the responsible in the university for these international uh, practices, uh, Jose. Okay, uh, but my, my another comment is just to Daniela. Uh, but I think that uh, Daniela uh, Granada and Berno has a very similar situation concerning uh, the biotechnological uh, development. So maybe uh, 
this is just a start point for a future cooperation that can be very successful and fruitful because uh, you know uh, we have more or less the same problem and more or less the same ideas so maybe we can uh, enforce this uh, collaboration uh, giving uh, some uh, you know facilities for the students to to move to Berno or to come to granada yeah exactly uh, i'm sorry <laughs> I have a call, sorry. <laughs> I'll be back in a, in a second. Okay, any other comments or questions or concern? Because I have, uh, I don't have very good news with Dene Active because uh, a family of uh, Maria Jose de la Paz passed away yesterday, so she cannot be here, obviously. It was a, her grandparents, so so we are not going to have a DNA active presentation. Um, we also have many presentations from Henio from uh, uh, the Institute of uh, Genetic and Oncology. So we thought that, that will be good because there was no enough space today, and for organization reason, we pass it to the 25th of March because we thought that it will be easier for all of us to have all the presentation for the from the researcher from Henio there. So, so we now uh, have uh, Abbott, and Abbott is doing interviews, uh, and she's going to connect uh, soon, but uh, it's not already here. So maybe if you have more questions or anything, uh, or if not, we can just wait for Abbott. Um, uh, have a, like a little break here. What do you think? Uh, do you have any other questions? Or should we stop, uh, just uh, pause and wait, uh, and just the student keep going? Um, I mean, uh, give the, I mean, you can leave the chat open and the, the Zoom open, and I will let you know when. Uh, um, when Esther is here from Abbott. But, uh, Lourdes, can you call Abbott in order to participate right now? Or is because uh, yes, uh, she's telling me that she is because I tell her at 11 uh, uh -huh. because she was doing the interview. So, and that's why uh, I, I just told her. And she told so, me, I, she told me, yeah. is, I'm in, in the middle of an interview, and when I finish, okay. I, I will connect it. Okay, so let's make a break and then the restart at 11, okay? Exactly, okay. But then let's do that, okay? Thank you so much for all, for your, particip for your participation. Uh, Lourdes, are you going to do a concluding remarks or something about this uh, session? Or now mm. we are out of the, of the session? No, you, we were, uh, I was not uh, thinking to do any conclusion, but we have, you have the presentation here, the students, and we will keep working uh, with the different companies. Uh, we have more presentation the 25th of March, as we were announcing before. Um, you can, you have all this information, you will have it in the website in Granada Salud and PTS Granada in the, the recording of this, uh, um, uh, of all this presentation will be in the part of the say, como uh, atraer talento uh, universitario y, and we will keep going. Okay. okay well, <laughs> Do you I'll, have I'll, any comments yeah. or Antonio? Yes, I would like to encourage the student to participate in these uh, discussions, asking questions, because, you know, if not, uh, they're losing a big opportunity yeah. because it's not easy to get these people because they have so busy agendas that it's almost impossible to have contact. Even if they send an email, uh, they, they are so busy that sometimes it takes time. So uh, maybe for a student, it's a good idea just to take a look to the enterprises that are going to do presentation and see more or less what is the, the, the field in which they work and be prepared for, for asking questions during the, uh, the meeting, okay? Yes, because it's a, an opportunity, it's a golden opportunity, let's put it in that way. It's, you are not going to have another opportunity like that that you can ask questions. And also it's a way, it's a way that they can know you and that you that you are not this and, and, 
Uh, Francisco is asking uh, here about the organization of the internship and what are the the time. No, so I, I think that the time is the mid in May. Oh. No, is when they are starting. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the timing is depending on the agreement you made with the enterprises. So maybe the, there are different times for each one. So cannot precise for uh, all of you. Uh, basically, the, 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 the internship are going to start in the mid of May because it's when you finish all your classes, your theoretical and practical classes. So most prices they, they, they need to be full time uh, dedication to the enterprises. So that's the reason to start in mid May. But you, you, you get another agreement, you can start even right now, if, if possible. So uh, no, there's not a big problem. Uh, regarding uh, when you have to, to select the enterprises, you have to contact the enterprises and see all the detail. And if you are interested and, and you want to, to be in that enterprise, you just tell, tell us about your intention and, and we will uh, tell you exactly uh, when is the time. Because it depends on the, on the kind of agreement you make with the enterprises. So it, let's say we, we have to have everything finished by the end of April, but now we, we can finish it if you get an agreement uh, immediately, no, no, no big problem. Okay, but thank you. No more questions, so we are going to finish now, okay? Okay. okay. And for the thank next you. time, for thank the 25th, you. please review the companies and ask questions. It's a great opportunity for all of you. Bye. <laughs> Bye now.